Uh, he looks good. I think he, I truly think he could play in a game tonight. He could. Like that's how fit this guy is. So he does a bunch of things for us, and he's working in management now and some doing a little bit of scouting. But what he's also great at is he can push players rehabbing better than anybody because he has his equipment on. And he's as fit as anybody there. So if you can't keep up to a retired player, um, you you know you've got some work to do. So we bring him in for that. He comes out and he's pushing Ekblad and Montour. Gladovich and uh, and Bennett hard now and and he's he's really really good at it. so it's a nice it's a nice addition uh, to the coaching staff when he comes in and helps out like that. We've seen him in the the, the track suit. This is the first time we've seen him in gear. Yeah, or has he done that before? No, I think when as the drills amp up, um, not so much on Ekblad and Montour yet, but definitely on the other two. There's a little bit of bumping that can go on and and um, he. He, a coach can't do that, and sometimes another player can't do that. So you need a guy who, who knows how hard to push along the wall, right? And uh, he spent his whole life on the wall, so he knows those battles. I know. So he's been good for us. He looked like Bob. Glad to have his buddy shooting at him. Yeah, yeah, we, we're bringing him in for shots, too. He's, Patrick's just an incredibly interesting, incredibly positive guy to have around, right? Like he. These guys got to be tired of these skates, truly. I mean, they were, it's been coming up on you know, four and a half months, and they're back on the ice. So having the little enthusiasm out there, Patrick's so excited about the workout this morning, you can't not be, right? Like, he is all jacked up to get on the ice and skate as hard as he possibly can, so he drags those other guys out there, and they, they end up having fun while they're, while they're getting a hell of a workout. Speaking of excitement, what do you sense from Stolarz getting in the game for Yeah, you know what? He's been great here. He, he's, it's, it's a hard job to know that you go into the crease when the table's not set perfectly. That's, that's usually the backup. You get the best. second half of back-to-backs, you, know, you, you spell off the number one guy. So you kind of get in there and under uh, less than perfect situations. But he's a veteran guy, and he, he understands how to do that. The other thing the guy does is he's, he's got to work so hard in practice that the players feel indebted to him a little bit, and they want it for him, right? They, they, they appreciate what he's done in there. He's a good guy. Um, he's a talker in the net, which will be good for, for the number of new people that we have in our lineup. So everybody's pulling for him, and he's, he's figured out a way to get everybody to rally around him. And for Lockwood, how much did he win this opportunity going being back to camp with a strong camp? That well, he had? it's completely from camp. So he, he uh, gets on the radar by his kind of professionalism in terms of you'd see the video once go and he'd run the routes right he'd just do exactly what you asked him to do and he does it with speed and he's got a good stick so there weren't a lot of numbers through camp to suggest that he gets into your top nine um but he certainly when he left camp here he put himself in a position when the call goes down who's the guy and it's him the coaches say sure bring him up let's play him right we see it we see what he has and and we value it uh, for Lundell, he's his wings have been revolving yeah. most of the season. Just the importance of him to be able to stabilize a line regardless of who's on the wings and him having to shut yeah. that through. That's, that's part of maturity, right? The center's got to drive the line, and that sometimes when you're 20 or 21, that's a lot to ask. So he's played with, I guess, Luce Ryan and the NZ Young Club, but played with Ryan Hart, who's a veteran player. And I think you're right, he, he's got to transition to the point. But just based on the injury and some illness that had kind of gone around the room. We need him to drive a line. I liked his last game, um, so I think he's building to that. Eventually, we'll get healthy here, we think, and we will uh, be able to put him with maybe more veteran players. I'll tie those Solars and Lockley, any other lineup changes? Possibly, but I don't know yet. San Jose comes in here. No, I mean, I don't know yet. <laughs> San Jose comes in here, still in search of that first win. What's been the message that you're conveying in terms of not Oh, it's, play? yeah, we, we were not at that phase of the game yet. And certainly, if you look at last year's standings, uh, you wouldn't have seen the game. You know, Vancouver, of our last three, we go Jersey, Toronto, Vancouver. Vancouver played the best game by far of all of our opponents, and they were in the playoffs last year. So we'll expect that. I don't think, and this might be just personal, like, I don't think that the, because you don't see the other team, you, you can't really know their style, right? They have a different, every team has its own based on personnel style. So spending a lot of time uh, worrying about the other team, especially this early, we, we won't. We'll be respectful of everybody because we're under 500 and not in the playoffs either. So we're both scratching and clawing. Coach, special teams obviously have some importance sometimes to how games go. Yeah. Where would you assess where you guys are as far as that area of the game? Is yeah, so both of them haven't been 
well, clearly the numbers will tell you they're not great right now. I haven't been as concerned with their power play just because I know we're getting enough chances. And I, I, the only thing I'm watching for that on the power play is speed. I'm worried that you start slowing down when you don't score goals. You start you're looking for a better play. So we'll, we're watching that. But the penalty kill is the area, right? That's the area that's got to improve. We've had. We've given up eight. Four of them are highly unusual. One's a four on three that we knocked out of the middle of the air to the, to the wide open guy in front. One's a, there was no goalie. It was five on five. I had pulled the goalie. It was at the end of the game. So that's one of them. We gave a rush goal. We've only given up the one rush goal. And the other was six on four with a broken stick. So half of our goals are kind of outside of what you would consider a penalty kill format. And then the other four, three of the players on the ice are um, brand new. And your penalty kill on your power play, I mean, all it really does is it tries to create a foot of ice. It's just a, a lane, a foot of ice either to the net or to a seam. And you do that through speed when you have a whole bunch of moving parts, new people in, trying to learn how to adjust off each other. That creates sometimes that foot of ice. And that's what we're trying to eliminate. So we've got Forsling and Barkoff and Reinhardt kind of on another penalty kill group. They've played together before they don't, they haven't given up a goal. So we're, we've got some work to do for sure on that, but we're confident we can get there. Steven Lawrence brings a joy yeah. to the game that, uh, that obviously gets you through an 82 game season. Yeah. How important do you see that as, as part of the makeup of your team? It is a big part of our culture to the point that early on when you're learning about a player, it was the thing I liked the most, right? So first two weeks of camp, I mean, it, you're not, he's, he's played in the league. I'm not worried about him figuring out how to run the routes and all that, but he's chirping the entire time, and we love that because we, we, you know, you lose some players, and they're, some of them are vocal players, so you need to bring people back in to kind of fill in. And then we got like seven or eight brand new guys here, and they're, in general, new players are usually a little bit more quiet. It takes them a while to get comfortable, but it didn't take Steve more than two practices, and he was, he was talking, smiling, laughing. And we do value that. That's an important part of what we do. Anthony Duclair coming from the Duke. Seven Sharks. Uh, yeah. And Giovanni Smith, too, was yeah. here. But give us a thought of what San Jose people can expect uh, from these guys. Uh, well, they can both skate different ends of the spectrum in terms of what they bring to the table. And uh, Smitty's a tough kid like, and, and willing to go to the front of the net. And he, he doesn't make a lot of positional mistakes. He actually knows the game pretty well. Big man. We liked him an awful lot. Duke is... Uh, a personality here. He's a, a bit of a phenomenon here. He, he's got this huge smile and this huge heart. So the non-hockey part of it is he just draws people to him and he does a tremendous amount of work in the community because that's just his personality. That's who he is. He's, he reaches out to people. He makes it. You, you talk to Duke and within five minutes you're just smiling because he is. You can't figure out why you leave the conversation but you're in a great mood. The hockey player is really interesting. I mean he's a powerful man that can skate and he can get it off his stick as well as anybody. I think he's had an unusual career. I mean, he fit here for sure. He fit everything other than the salary cap for our team. So that's, right. that's, that we understand. Um, but I think you're going to love him. But one of those guys that's important to an organization because he will be an exciting player to cheer for. So you can put his name on the back of your sweater when you buy a Sharks jersey and you get to come to the rink and have fun. But he's also going to be involved in your community to a level that you'll feel he's part of you. He'll, he'll become that very quickly because that's certainly what he was here. Okay.